I knew that I needed to make a few hard decisions in the company, I told myself, this is going to be a season of stress. I'm gonna answer a bunch of questions, including how to bounce back if you've made a bad financial decision in business, how to differentiate if it's shiny object syndrome versus something new you should do. And then lastly, one of the toughest things that I've had to overcome in the recent year. The only reason that you need to bounce back is because you have put yourself down. Making bad decisions is part of business. There will be times when you might even make the right decision and it will still have negative financial ramifications on the business. Does it mean that the decision-making criteria is bad? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. There are so many times where I take risks and I will lose money. Does that mean that I am bad at business or bad at investing? No, if you look at your mistakes as a cost of doing business, rather than something that's wrong with you or the business, then there is nothing to bounce back from because it's just accepting the fact that that is part of the game. Come to terms with reality and it won't feel so bad. Most of the time, the reason that people don't know the difference between shiny object syndrome and a good new idea is that they are very unclear on the vision of where they need to go. Oftentimes people have like four really big ideas. People start with one vision and they're working their way towards it, but then they get distracted with something else and they start trying to work towards that. And then they get distracted with something else and then it's like you have three paths and all three are incentivizing, but the reality is that you're not going to achieve any one of them because you haven't committed. Think about your vision. Will this help me get there faster or not? And if you can't answer that question, then you need to go back to the vision. Crystallize where you wanna go, what it looks like when you get there, what your surroundings are like, what the circumstances look like. It's really easy to get distracted because the thing that you're working towards is not compelling. Therefore, you are distractible. For me, it's easy to say no to things for acquisition.com because I feel confident in the vision that we have of the future and what that looks like. You're always going to feel like, oh, I could have done that. That could have looked better. That is human nature. New shiny things always look better. Sticking with the plan is more important. The most disciplined entrepreneurs end up having the biggest businesses because they can commit to the long, hard path. Everything always takes longer and is harder than we expect. I see the people who are winning. They are staying committed to their path. In order to even achieve that big vision, they have to be that committed because it's the only way you get people to help you get there. If they see you're not committed, how the fuck are you gonna get them to be committed? You're just not. If I were trying to take my name out of a company, I would just ask myself, what does the company do? Acquisition.com makes sense because we acquire stake in businesses. Gym launch made sense because we launched gyms. I think that making names as simple as possible, where the most amount of people can understand and from the name itself, delineate what it does and doesn't do, that makes the most sense to me. What does your company do? Write those words down and then find one that you like. I don't also consider myself an expert at this. Like I'm not fucking Elon Musk. I don't know why it's called Tesla. I don't even know why it's called SpaceX. I have no fucking idea. So the way that I think through if the business or career is right for me, is like, I don't, one, believe anything is right for me. We all have preferences. And most of the time, we want more of the things we like and less of the things we don't like. And a lot of it comes from just knowing what you like and don't like, because most people don't even take the time to think about it. They just feel things and react to the feelings. But if you can start with, what do you want your life to look like? What do you like want to be doing every day? What do you want to feel every day? What kind of people do you want to talk to every day? What kind of things do you want to study every day? And then, does this career or that career fit more into that vision? For me, I looked at Gym Launch. When we started the company, we did not have that thought process. We weren't like, what do we like? What do we not like in terms of what our days look like, what we're studying, what we're having to do to grow the business. As I became more mature in owning that business, I started getting more in tune with like, what do I like? What do I not like? What kind of company do I like running? What are my natural strengths and weaknesses and how can I utilize them best? For me personally, I think that acquisition.com is a much better fit for my skill set. I like things where like, I have to be patient to win. I've always known that about myself because every big thing I've accomplished in life has required patience. And so I've been reinforced for that. I have my ultimate, what would I prefer my life to look like? And then how does everything else fit into that? What kind of business does it look like? What kind of marriage does it look like? What kind of, and for me, they're all intertwined. So it's really easy to make decisions because it's like I have one big vision and everything falls beneath those things. Most people ask how they can create a strong culture in a startup. And the reality is, is that most people just don't do the basics. And I have not had yet in my career to do beyond the basics, to create a really cool culture. So what are the basics? Like really choose values that actually mean something to you. I 
think about our values, I use them to make decisions, I talk about them all the time, it comes naturally to me because they mean something, because they are organic to who I am and to who Alex is. Because of that, we talk about them all the time, we use them in decision making. People in a small team see that and they mimic. They mimic what you're doing, which is like using the values to make decisions, talking about the values, referring to the values. The best thing that you can do is choose the right values that define your culture. And I think that if you can do that, you're already 90 steps ahead of everybody else. Because everyone says that they've chosen great values. And then when I ask them, like, tell me your values, and then they have to like look at a piece of paper. <laughs> and it's like, you already know that you've lost. If you can't even rehearse them, then they're obviously not meaningful to you. What's your fashion inspiration? Goth. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I just try to match the inside. I like um, a lot of Asian Japanese fashion, uh, which has a lot of angles. Alexander Wang or Alexander McQueen, they have a lot of that kind of style. What do I want my fashion to look like? I think a representation of myself, which is probably like feminine with an edge meets business professional. I like to wear black and white primarily because I don't like picking colors and I feel like it complicates your wardrobe. And the thing about black and white is that they all match each other. I can just always mix and match it and it always matches each other versus if you have like yellow and pink and green, it just makes it that much more complicated. If you like to buy nice stuff, you can buy fewer things. If you wear black and white, you can match multiple outfits. You wanna be outside the status quo. I would say that there's two things, which is telemedicine is booming. Any way that you can translate your services or your business into one that is online and remote, people have already voted with their dollars. So that is something that they value and that they would prefer that to in-person because of the inconvenience. One, deliver results in the way people wanna buy it now, which is remote. And then two is deliver the experience wrapped around those results by also focusing on how you make them feel throughout the entire experience. You went there to get an arts degree to do what? If you really want that thing, what's the first step to getting there? What's the first job you have to get? I would be emailing people my resume, selling them on why they should give me an interview. Because even if a place isn't hiring, if somebody is excellent and they have the balls to do that, a lot of people will consider you and you're having a hard time finding this talent to come work for you. I would look for more how you can develop a training system within your business where you can just find people and sell them on the opportunity of like how much money they can make within this business. So you find people that have the right character traits, you bring them in, you train them. That's kind of like the exchange that you're giving. The other route to just consider is what is your employee value proposition? You might not be providing what they want. You might not be solving a problem that they have. Is it that you're not paying enough? The description of the job is very boring and monotonous. You have to figure out what the whole is. And so a good way that you could do this is that people that pass on the opportunity, you ask them why. What is it about this opportunity that wasn't incentivizing enough for you? people will give you an answer. I can tell you that I have gotten the most amount of information from asking candidates themselves, basically getting market feedback rather than trying to guess. The mistake that people make in terms of like when they build out their organizational structure is one, most people just think like triangle, like I am building an org and it looks like this. The most successful organizations, which only 20% of organizations actually even do this, is they match the external strategy they have, their strategy in the marketplace to acquire customers and such, with an internal strategy as well. The strengths internally should match and support your external goals. Acquisition.com. Most people look at our org and they would be like, you have too many people for a PE firm. And I'm like, right, for a traditional PE firm, because what most traditional PE does is they bring your business in, they financially engineer it, and then they try to flip it within say three to five years. They don't do a ton of value add. They don't try to organically grow any piece of the business. Acquisition.com is a growth partner. Therefore, we have a head of marketing, a head of sales, a head of customer success. We actually come in and try to help people organically grow the business before we do other acquisitions or financially engineer any of that stuff. You have to understand what your external strategy to the marketplace is and you have to match it internally. So if I were to have this tiny little team, would that be conducive to helping people grow their business? Probably not, there wouldn't be enough resources. Having a lack of clarity in the organization just stems from having a lack of clarity as to why the organization exists in the first place. If you don't know why the overarching organization exists, then how can you know why each role exists? And role clarity comes from knowing why each role exists and what function it plays to the company and to the greater strategy of it in the marketplace. What is the toughest thing that I've had to deal with in the last year and a half myself in business? I knew that I need to make a few hard decisions in the company, which was going to create a lot of work for me. I told myself, this is going to be a season of stress. And so I reset my expectations with reality. So then when I made some hard decisions and I had to accommodate to those changes, I felt totally fine about it 
In a weird way, I had told myself and already accepted and chosen to do this anyways, knowing that I was going to feel stressed. What I used to do was that I would seek out a situation that would be challenging, but I would cross my fingers and fucking hope that I wasn't gonna be stressed and anxious or sad or upset. I've accepted that those things are going to happen. I might have stress about the situation, about a fluctuation in workload, about having more responsibility for a period of time, but I don't also have stress on top of that feeling like, why am I stressed about this? Why am I upset? Why am I sad? I'm at peace with the fact that there is stress rather than trying to fight it, which causes more stress. It's a season it will pass.